Welcome back, everybody. Today is the eighth module of Learn Spiritism classes, and we'll be talking about mediumship. Let's get started. Definition. Let's go in to see what the definition of mediumship. I'm going to start off by mentioning that it's a gift from God. It's not something that it's our own faculty. It's a gift from God. It can be employed either in a good or in an evil way. It depends on how we use that tool that we're given. It's really the result of us being in contact directly with discarnate spirits. So it's just that channel of communication between the physical world and the spiritual world. As we know, that those definitions can be found in What is Spiritism by Allan Kardec. There's some other ones that are very important for us to have a good understanding what mediumship really is. It can be said that it's the light that would be spread throughout the flesh. It is one of the most beautiful opportunities of progress and redemption that we can have in our physical lives. It is an attribute of the spirit. So every spirit, every little, every single one of us, carried that out as an attribute. And it belongs to the immortal soul, as we know. These definitions are in a book by Emmanuel called The Consoler. As we can see here, Francis Xavier, and his, his protector, Spirit Emmanuel, writes a couple of things around mediumship objectives. What, are, what, is, it, what is it mediumship for? What should it be used for? Its first is the field of work where most the sublime expressions of fraternity can flourish under Jesus' inspirations, as we understand. It's really the enlightenment of the soul and beneficial to desperate spirits in their evolutionary path. In other words, it's the vehicle that we can use to help discarnate desperate spirits who are looking for some guidance from assistance that involve, that may involve some of us. The gospel will always be the basis for the mediumship, mediumship, mediumistic practice. In other words, we need to be based on Jesus' teachings so we can be better practitioners of mediumship. Also, Emmanuel tells us that it's really the cooperation between the incarnate and the discarnate. But most important, it's the service of comfort and enlightenment to both spirits. So in order for us to help the discarnate in that effort of liberation from the webs of ignorance and suffering, in other words, every time we practice mediumship, if we practice with a purpose behind, if we practice to really try to help those from a different plane, a different realm, we're using that to liberate, to free these spirits from the webs of ignorance and suffering that they may have caused in the past. The medium, him or herself, as we learn, the medium is that worker or that channel that connects with the spiritual world. Everybody that feels the influence of any spirit in any degree can be considered a medium. And these influences may be in different Stages in different strengths, as we see later on. It's a faculty that is inherent to mankind. Every single one of us can become a medium, as we'll also see later on. Continuing, it is not a privilege. That faculty does not manifest itself equally in everybody. In other words, that faculty may do something for me, may help me with some ways, may help other fellow friends in different ways. Each according to our own needs and necessities. There are many types, as there are many types of manifestations. We can go over to those in the next slides. These are some of the characteristics of the medium that is found in the Spirits book. If we want to go over and deeper around mediumship, we advise you to go to the Mediums book, also written by Ellen Kardec. Continuing, the education of mediumship. The greatest need of the medium is to educate him or herself. In other words, a medium that is uneducated, a medium that is unlightened, that is not worried about gaining more knowledge, about becoming a better medium day in, day out, is a medium in danger. The medium has the obligation to study and working hard for his or her own illumination. As we said, mediumship is not a gift. It's not a privilege. It's not that the medium has anything special. It's the other way around. It's one more avenue 
for that person, the medium, him or herself, to work hard, to really dedicate himself or herself to do better, to help others, and ultimately to help him or herself. Only in this way that he or she will efficiently cooperate with spirits that are sincere and committed with both goodwill and truth, and by practice mediumship. Given the rules that Jesus had taught us, it's the main and most efficient way for us to practice that faculty, both to help other fellow spirits and to help ourselves as well. Let's now talk about mediumship and its development. What do we need to do to develop mediumship in our own selves? As we mentioned before, everybody has mediumship skills that can be cultivated to its maximum. Every single one of us is capable of developing mediumship, as we learn from Emmanuel again. Mediumship should be developed by educating values and improving the ability to serve for the goodwill of others. In other words, we should always use mediumship to help fellow human beings, fellow spirits, discarnates and incarnates, to do better, to gain more knowledge, to gain more awareness about their own lives and the wrongdoings they, have make, they may have committed in the past. To win ourselves regarding the bad tendencies that we are carrying. In other words, by helping other fellow human beings, we are also learning to better correct ourselves in case we are facing the same difficulties, the same hardships or challenges that that fellow spirit is going through. Most importantly, the practice of charity and work for the greatest good. In other words, we should always see mediumship as one more vehicle, one more avenue that God gives us. So we can all work both in our own benefit, but most importantly, to the benefit of others. And through the practice of charity, through education, through really dedication, we can do a great job and we can use this tool for the benefit of of both discarnates and incarnates. It should never be the fruit of haste. Spontaneity is essential. For this vehicle to be in good communication, to be a very efficient one, we need to leave the channel open. That's why spontaneity is essential. It can never be a fruit of haste because if we're becoming biased by so-and-so, chances are we're not going to become a good avenue a good vehicle of communication. The communication will get corrupted to its destination or when we, we make that communication out or, di or, or, or disseminate that communication. Every mediumship task is directed by the spiritual mentors and guides. So every single type of mediumship task is always going to be directed by our own guide, our spirit guides, and by the mentors who are driving those, that, that work itself. Those are the development that we learn from, a, from, from mediumship in a standpoint of us better utilizing mediumship, again, to the benefit of ourselves first. We're working, trying to help, trying to use it to your own benefit, but most importantly, to benefit others, to practice charity, to serve others as Jesus had served us many, many, many times. But in order for us to practice mediumship, we need to know what kinds of mediumship are available for us. So let's get started and understand that there is no mediumship that is better or more valuable than others. Oh, this one is better than the other. No. Every mediumship has a value, has a purpose behind it. And it's our understanding that each one, each mediumship type is an open field, the most beautiful spiritual enterprise. In other words, it's this great vehicle that God gives us. By just being a medium, he uses missionary spirit with sincere dedication and pure fraternity. So he, his or her job is not betrayed by improductivity. So in other words, we need to try, strive as much as possible to leave that channel open. So good, benevolent spirits can utilize, can guide that channel, can really uh, control that channel. So the communication is always beneficial for the communicating spirit and those who are listening to the message. Continuing with types of mediumship, they're common of all types. We have mediums of physical effects. We also have mediums of natural effects. We have mediums of intellectual effects. Those are the most common types of mediumship, mediumships. And under each one of them, for example, the medium of physical effects, we have healing, those who can really produce healing towards others, 
that can work to heal, to cure others, and so forth. Remember, the medium is not the one healing that person. It's just being the avenue, the connection between a spirit world or spirits who are working there to heal that person. It's also important to mention that healing is only possible when the spirit receiving that healing deserves to be healed. We could have great mediums, a lot of benefactor spirits trying to help so-and-so. If that individual person does not deserve to be healed yet, he or she will not be healed. When we go to spiritist centers, we have past givers, folks who are you know, secluded in the room that when we get there, they give us passes. So these passes are also physical effects, mediums of physical effects. They are giving us energy. They're giving us this biophysical energy that we can use for our own benefit. And of course, we have mediums of intellectual effect, as we see here in this picture. Those who can hear spirits talking, those who can hear a little communication that are able to pass that communication, either orally, written, or sometimes in different perspectives. Those who can speak what the spirit is intuiting them to say, or giving them the intuition to say. Those are, there are also uh, mediums that can see. They can see discarnate spirits, they can see some situations, and so forth. Are those spirits, are those mediums, better saying, that can practice channeling or psychography, automatic writing as we know. Many of the spirits' books were written through psycho automatic writing, or the medium is receiving those communication messages towards a, a, a pen and paper and literally passing that information through the writing techniques. There's also the uh, more common mediumship of inspiration. Those who feel, mm, I, there's a sense of me going to this direction. And we are driving and all of a sudden we have a sense, make a left. And we make a left, down the road there's a major accident. Had we been driving in that same direction, we would have perhaps been caught in the middle of the accident. The inspirational medi mediums, that, that's how the spirituality can use, can influence every single one of us in its most common way. It's very important to mention that mediumship, to be valuable, to be productive, we have to remember Jesus' teachings. We have to remember the purpose behind mediumship. And let us not practice mediumship for practicing, for making money of it. No. Remember, though, it's a gift from God. It's something that we receive from God. And even Jesus himself said, we should give freely or we, have, we were given freely. We should have give free or we were given freely. In other words, we should be mediums. Yeah, we should develop mediumship. Yes, we should attend mediumship meetings if possible, of course. But remember, let us practice mediumship with a little guidance from Jesus' teachings, Kardec's works, this guide for mediums and practitioners, so we can better control our mediumship and can better, ha better, have better results both to ourselves and to those fellow loved spirits who need to communicate. With that, I would like to thank you all for attending our eighth module, Mediumship. Hope to see you back with us for the next module. Thank you very much and have a great day.